Paul Anderson. And his accomplice, Nick Fozzar, two big men. They'll be seeking to wear out these uh, youngsters. Oh, there's a chance! That's the first one! Lee Gilmore in at the side of the post! All the big clubs really have got their youth development sorted out. There's a structure within each club and a player pathway for the players to come through in a progressive manner in order to play at this level, at Challenge Cup and Super League level. Saints fans, but coming from nowhere. Saints now moving in with Skulltop. Another good tackle. This time from David Allen. Fozard using his weight, using his power. And I think Fozard's got there. Yes, he has. No need to consult the video referee. The tackle completed, John, when the ball or the elbow hits the ground. Cunningham now. Skullthorpe trying to get it away, but uh, this uh, Wigan defence sorely pressed by the power and pace of this uh, St Helens side. Caden Cunningham directing operations, but there's another try. Jason uh, Hooper again coming on the short ball from uh, Cunningham. Cunningham again, just look at the man piling the pressure down the middle. Wigan can't can't hold this Great Britain uh, hooker. But it was the power of Cunningham that split Wigan right down the middle. James Graham, one of the many young Liverpool lads who are now taking up that rugby league in the schools and colleges there. Well, they're really going forward with purpose out the St. Helens and uh, they're winning the yardage battle and they're winning the football battle. Gilmore, here is that Anderson again. He's got Paul. Superb backing up and support play from the Great Britain now fullback. Mike Bennett. What's he doing? He's having a drop goal. And he scored it. Well, I've seen everything, John. 38 minutes gone, 34 nil. And Paul Scott's going for drop goal. Is yeah. he taking the mid I, I think there's an element of that, but they may as well practice all the things that are on the training field. And I'm sure setting up the one point is one of them. But as it's coming to half time, Ray, you may as well take every point on offer. But uh, the 34 points, you've got the game won. So you may as well make it 35. Talents looking to open it up down here to Jamie Lyon. Beautiful pass inside. Here now he's got Edmondson. Can Edmondson go all the way? He's got Paul Wallace alongside him, but he doesn't need it. Oh, terrific pace there from a prop forward. Mark Edmondson racing in. He had Paul Wallace alongside him in support. He didn't need it. He wanted the four points himself, and he's got it. I don't think, Ray, there was any way that Mark Edmondson was going to pass that ball. He got the classic white line fever, didn't he? He uh, saw that white line, he was going for it, but look how it was created. Fozard going forward, offload, lovely soft hands again. And Wellens threw a speculator out, but watch his pass from Lyons. One hand on the inside, he pulled the defender to him. Schultz then released to Edmondson, and nobody's having the ball except Mark Edmondson, and he was just going for it and enjoying it. But it's this lovely soft hands, and watch the pass from Jamie Lyon. He'll pull a defender in from the inside, and then bang, just pops it up for Skullthorpe. Great support once again, and he's rid get away, Paul Wellens, because I'm going to score myself. What a great try. Coming more in the game, it's number three from Australia. Edmondson again, running powerfully, but uh, taking a good tackle, smacking the midriff there. Skullthorpe. Bozart's going! Side of Skullthorpe, his second try of the afternoon. Nick Fozard, no stopping him. Gallant defence from Wigan for 12 or 13 tackles, but in the end, sheer power.
beating the Wigan. And I think interesting there, uh, Wigan with just three interchanges uh, remaining. Obviously, Ian Millwall have been following your policy of uh, regular interchanges to uh, ease out the workload. He certainly has, but you've got the uh, the most fatiguing uh, quarter, the last quarter. There. Oh, my word! And another one of those flat balls. We saw it from Teddy Newton in the first half. Here from Dennis Moran in the second half. And Jamie Lyon running in from 60 metres. But there we can see the fans packed on that uh, top side there. Many uh, Wiganers putting on a brave face, but loyally supporting their sides. And Helen's too. A capacity all ticket crowd here of 17,467 watching this uh, this game. The ball here with St. Oren and Finney Anderson again going down the left hand side. Well, it's looking for support. There he is again. Mark Anderson in for yet another. Forwards interchanging with backs and forwards showing the speed to three quarters, Mark Edmondson in for his second. Well, they might have made a few on this lap. Paul Anderson, there we see the difference, 127 to 80. 47 tackles, well, that's a heck of a lot of defending to do against a team that's playing as quick, as fluidly and as confidently as this. And that also, John, I would say, is against a pack, which is probably a couple of stone a man different. There is Wilkin. But he's hat trick, he puts three fingers high in the air. Still, this relentless pressure coming down on Wigan. Wellens. Wilkin. No way through there for Gilmore, thanks to Danny Tickle there, number 11 for Wigan. Beautiful little chip kick, uh, or grubber kick, John. It was a great piece of skill, wasn't it? When you're in the zone like this and things are going right for you, you can try anything and things go up, but you've still got to execute them, and it had no space whatsoever, did it? There looked to be nothing on at all. It's Anderson once again, who's been a thorn in the side all, all afternoon, and a lovely little kick in about a yard of space, a great pick up there, and a marvellous finish. It really was outstanding skill there, just to keep the ball within play. And he picked up Ray yep. without breaking stride. But he's blessed with pace, John, isn't he? And any wingman with pace, you know, that's the... Uh, that's why you do it. Absolutely. So, but this fellow's had a great game, hasn't he, Vinnie Anderson? And it's once again, it's that one-handed offload that is renowned for, that is known for. And a beautiful dab throw there from Gardner, one-handed pick-up, and he's just got the pace and the strength to finish. <laughs> Roby coming away, he's a strong youngster. He gets it to Mike Bennett now then. It's a race between Bennett and Gleason. Bennett, the stronger man, Gleason the faster man. But it's back on that within 20 metre line. Sage looking for the final try. To James Graham, and James Graham's going in the corner. Oh, what a finale for that young man. James Graham, the youngster from Liverpool. His third try in the St. Helens red and white colours. No pressure on this uh, man at all, except the satisfaction of putting between the uprights. Oh, and he does! Tremendous roar of applause all around from the Saints fans. Not a smile. Not a hint of uh, satisfaction from Daniel Anderson, but there certainly is from Eamon McManus, the chairman. The cup holders retain their interest in this season's tournament. They join Leeds, Hull and Toulouse in the draw for the semi-finals. And that scoreline of 75 points to nil. Well, Wigan had a run.
record set against them at 70 nil by Leeds last week. I'm sure that the Sage fans will be delighted when they know that their club now holds the record score. Many feared the Millward factor, but despite a gallant effort from the men there and men like Terry Newton who gave the all despite injuries, the Wigan Colts just simply hadn't got the firepower available on the pitch to overcome the side that he guided to the Millennium Stadium last year. I'm sure, John, that Wigan and Ian will rebuild, but for now, it's St Helens.